Hey, math crew. Um, so now we're going to begin applications of trig. Um, I have this split into two different uh, lessons. So today we're going to focus on applications of trig derivatives where we are looking at max and min type problems. And then in our next lesson, we will focus on application of trig derivatives where we're, we're looking at more related rate uh, questions. Okay. Okay, so for today, I want to go through kind of two um, problems with you, and then you'll have the rest of this time to uh, go through a bunch of problems yourself. Okay, so here's the first one. An isosceles triangle has equal sides of 15 centimeters. Use calculus concepts to determine the largest possible area of the triangle. So we need calculus. Obviously, we're going to try and do this from a trig perspective. Otherwise, this wouldn't be in trig unit. Uh, but we're going to start with a isosceles triangle. Just draw what you have. Okay. I know that the equal sides are 15 centimeters, and then I have to just randomly call the base something. Now, I'm going to call the base 2x. Okay. I'm not going to call the base x. Now, you might be saying why. Um, because if I want to start setting up some trig ratios, I need a right triangle. And to get a right triangle, I'm going to split this isosceles in half. Well, if I'm going to split the isosceles in half, it's going to make, make much nicer numbers if half of the base is x and the other half of the base is x. So the whole base will be 2x. Okay. So here I go, splitting my isosceles triangle in half. Um, and so I'm going to call this a uh, smaller base x, and then the height of the triangle will be h. Okay, so what do I know? Well, I know that the sine of theta, if I'm calling this guy theta, I know the sine of theta is h over 15. That gives me an, ex an expression for h. I can say h equals 15 times the sine of theta. I also know that the cos of theta would be x over 15, which gives me some sort of a relationship for x. X can be written as 15 cos of theta. Okay. All right. Why am I doing that? Well, overall, I'm looking for the largest area. So how do I get the area of any triangle? It's one half base times height or base times height divided by two, however you like to say that. Okay. Um, well, the base of my triangle, the way I've set this up right now is 2x and the height is h. Okay. But take a look we now have a way to represent h using trig functions, and we have a way to represent x using trig functions. So I'm just going to replace my x with 15 cos theta, and I'm going to replace my h with 15 sine theta. Okay. So if I do that, I end up with this. So now I have 1 half times 2, that's gone. 15 times 15 is 225. So 225 sine theta cos theta is the representation of the area. Now I want to take the derivative of that and I want to find the maximum point, okay? If I can find them, the, so I'm looking for, I'm going to take the derivative, sorry. <clears throat> so just start that again at 225 sine theta. Go again. So ultimately I'm looking for the maximum point of this graph because that'll give me the maximum area. So to do that, I'm going to take the derivative and I'm going to figure out my critical numbers and I'm going to see if where I'm changing from increasing to decreasing. Okay. So you need to see this as the product rule. So this is going to be sine of theta, cos of theta. That'll be the derivative of sine of theta is cos of theta. So I'll have cos of theta, cos of theta plus sine of theta times negative sine of theta cos of theta cos of theta is cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. Okay, and so now I want to figure out where my critical numbers are. Okay, so that could be where uh, this equals zero. Um, and that is where sine of theta, so, or sorry, sine squared of theta equals cos squared of theta. Um, now, I switch that to tan of theta, and it doesn't really matter how you do that, but I just want to make sure you understand what I did there. So I have right now zero equals cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. For some of you, you may want to just bring this over and say, okay, so I'm looking for where does sine of 
the sine squared theta equal cos squared theta. Okay. Um, and, and for some of you, you're very, very comfortable to just leave it at that. And that's totally fine. But if you're not, essentially what I do here is I divide both sides by cos squared. Okay. I'm not dividing a trigonometric function out here. I'm just changing the form because sine squared over cos squared is tan squared. So then I'm looking at tan squared theta equals one, which means tan of theta would equal plus or minus one. That's where that tan of theta equaling plus or minus one is coming from. Okay. Um, okay. So where does tan of theta equal plus or minus one? Well, that's every reference angle of pi over four. So I would have pi over four, three pi over four, five pi over four, and seven pi over four. But now we have to think about the context of this um, question. I'm solving for theta. Theta is stuck right there inside a right triangle. Well, theta has to be less than pi over four because that angle has to be less than 90 degrees. The only 90 degree angle in this triangle is not theta. It's this one over here, right? Okay, so in the constraints of the context, I know that theta has to be less than pi over two, which means the only critical number I care about here is pi over four. So I'm gonna put pi over four on a number line, and I'm gonna to test to the left and to the right, plugging that back into the derivative to see whether it's positive or negative. I end up with positive on the left and negative on the right. Uh, which tells me I have a maximum point, which is what I wanted, okay? So I know that I will get a maximum uh, area for this triangle when theta equals pi over four, okay? So what I'm gonna do is just go back, plug that back into uh, my original equation, okay? So sine of pi over four is root two over two, cos of pi over two, four is root two over two, um, so that's going to give me two over four, which is one half, which is 25 over two. Okay, so the maximum area that I can get for this triangle is 225 over two centimeters squared. Okay, so that was the first example. Um, again, just a reminder, I am expecting as you go through these at home, you are pausing and trying these as we go. Okay, all right. The second one we're going to try together is this guy. A ladder, or it could be a rod, or it could be a pipe, it doesn't really matter, is to be moved horizontally around the corner, as in the diagram. So this thick line that you see right here is meant to represent the object I'm trying to navigate around the corner. Okay. Determine the length of the longest ladder that can negotiate the corner, omitting the thickness of the ladder. Okay. The, the thing about real world contexts is, um, you know, we, we start you kind of as simple as possible. And then really in the real world, there's layers of complexity attached to that. So as you get deeper into math, we can get into deeper layers of complexity, okay? So calculus allows us to get into this layer of complexity. Getting into the thickness of the ladder though, that would be a whole other layer of complexity that we're not gonna deal with right now. Okay. Um, okay. So what do I know? Well, I'm going to break my ladder into two pieces because I can see two triangles, right? I could draw a triangle here and I could draw a triangle here. Um, and so I'm going to call one of those pieces length one and one of those pieces length two, essentially. Okay. And if I want this length to be a maximum, I'm essentially looking for length one plus length two, that's the total length of my ladder or my pipe or whatever it is. I want that to be a maximum. Okay, now I see two triangles here and I'm gonna label down here theta for the corners. Now, the question is, can I label both of those as theta? Um, and the answer is yes. And if you don't believe me, remember, if I'm labeling them both as theta, I'm insinuating that those are always going to be the same angle, right? And so the question I'm asking you right now is, am I allowed to do that or am I just making stuff up? I'm not making stuff up. Um, I can do that. And here is why this becomes a transversal over parallel lines. Okay, so if I just stretched these guys out for a second, these are all horizontal lines. And then this is a transversal over um, those 
parallel lines. And so we see that those are actually corresponding. Um, those are corresponding angles. And we know that if those lines are parallel, uh, corresponding angles equal each other, okay? So I'm just trying to help you understand I'm not making this stuff up. Okay, so I want a way to represent L1 using trig. Well, I know that the height here is three, so I can say that the that's opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of theta is three over L1. Okay, now I want this to be L1 equal, so that'd be three over sine theta. Instead of saying three over sine theta though, I'm gonna say um, three over cosecant of theta because one over sine is the cosecant. That way I can just keep it all linear, okay? All right, then I need something to represent L2. Well, if, uh, sorry, I don't know why that just disappeared on you. Um, okay, so I've got cos of theta is two over L2, which means L2 will be two over cos, um, but that'll be written as two secant of theta. Okay, so if I want L1 plus L2 to be a maximum, now I can say that I want three cosecant theta plus two secant theta to be my maximum. That is the guy that I'm working with right now. Okay. Okay, so let's do that. Um, the derivative of secant, sorry, let's start with cosecant. The derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. So that's going to be <clears throat> negative three cosecant theta cotangent theta. And then the derivative of secant is secant tan. So that will be two secant theta tan theta. Okay, so this is the derivative, um, but I need to try and now clean this up a little bit. I'm gonna switch things back to sine and cosine so that I can try and solve for when it is zero or when it doesn't exist. I need to get my critical numbers, right? Okay, so cosecant is one over sine, cotangents cos over sine, secants one over cos and tangent sine over cos, okay? So if I clean all this up now, this becomes negative three cos theta over sine squared theta, and this becomes two sine theta over cos squared theta. I now want to add these guys together, so I have one fraction. So my common denominator here is gonna be sine squared theta uh, cos squared theta, which means I need a cos squared theta on the fraction that's on the left, so that's going to end up being negative three cos cubed theta because I'm multiplying it by cos squared over sine squared theta cos squared theta. And then to the right, I need a sine squared theta. So that's going to be um, two sine cubed theta over sine squared theta cos squared theta. So my derivative in terms of sine and cosine looks something like this. Okay, now I need to figure out where it doesn't exist and where it is zero. Um, I know it doesn't exist at zero and pi over two because the, those are my non-principal values from down here. Um, where it equals zero, um, I essentially am going to take the top and set it equal to zero and we're gonna solve for that guy. Okay, I'm gonna do a similar thing that I did over here. I'm gonna divide everything by cos cubed. Um, that's going to give me negative three plus two tan cubed. Okay, so now I'm going to try and solve for that. Um, again, I'm not dividing anything out. I'm not making something disappear there. I'm just uh, switching forms. So then I'm looking at two tan cubed theta equals three, uh, which means tan cubed theta equals three over two. And I need to take the cube root of that. Okay. So then the cube root of three over two, and then I want theta by itself. So I have to uh, inverse 10. Okay, and that gives me around 0 0.85. Okay, I'm rounding to two decimal places there. Okay, so that's one of my critical numbers. The other critical numbers were zero and pi over two that I just discussed. Okay, but here we go again in context of the question. I actually can't be zero and I can't be pi over two, okay? Um, and essentially it's because if I was zero or pi over two, I'm just standing in a hole. I'm not actually trying to turn anything, right? Um, think of it like zero is here and pi over two is here, okay? So in the context of this question, I have to be greater than zero and I have to be less than pi over two, which means that 0 0.85 is the only one I'm, I'm plotting on a number line right now. So I'm gonna plot 0 0.85 on a number line. 
I'm going to look at to the left and to the right. And when I do that, I end up with a negative and a positive. So that tells me I'm going from decreasing to increasing, which means I'm finding a minimum where theta equals 0 0.85. Now, you may be scratching your head like this fella because you may be saying, okay, none of this worked because originally I was looking for the longest ladder. I was looking for the maximum. So how come my work gave me a minimum? The short answer is your work gave you a minimum because you're no longer looking at the length of the ladder. You're looking at the angle that I've labeled theta. When theta, this angle here is its minimum possible, the length of the ladder will be its longest, okay? So why a minimum? Think about it. If theta equals zero, the pipe is completely half in the hallway. As theta approaches infinity, then the length approaches infinity. And it's the same story if theta equals pi over two. So oddly enough, the maximum length of the ladder is obtained from the minimum angle that will allow the ladder to make the turn, okay? As this angle gets smaller, and you can almost picture it right now, right? As, let me actually just help you out here with a picture. As that angle, I'm gonna give you a smaller angle. Okay, now you see a longer ladder at a smaller angle of, for theta, okay? So the smallest angle possible is the minimum angle possible that will give me the longest ladder length, okay? Okay, so we know that I'm gonna get the longest ladder length when my angle is the minimum and my angle is the minimum at 0 0.85. So I'm gonna take that 0 0.85 and I'm gonna go back and plug it into my um, original uh, function, okay? And when I do that, I end up with 7.02. So the longest possible ladder that I can negotiate the turn of this hallway is 7.02 meters, okay? Anything longer than 7.02 meters, I'm not going to be able to make it around the corner. Okay. All right. So those are the sorts of things you're practicing today. Um, give yourself lots of time. Make sure you're connecting with me if you do have any questions. And uh, we will see you on the next guy for some more related rate sort of applications. Okay. Take care, guys.